Sometimes people engage in immorality. Sometimes people dress in what I would or you would consider uh, dressing that is immoral, for example. What can I do about it? The first thing, as soon as I see it, I feel in my heart, this is wrong. Then I can say, my sister or my brother, this is not the way it should be. And then sometimes my authority doesn't allow me to do anything by hand. So what happened is, I might say a word or two to say, please don't do this. That is by tongue. And if, I'm, if I can't even do that because it's a total stranger and maybe I don't even have the authority to talk to them in that way, based on the circumstances. In that particular case, at least in my heart, I can feel, you know what, this is not on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. So I just wanted to explain to you uh, this matter because many people don't consider it. One is the steps to change that which is evil. But two is what happens upon the witnessing of something evil. The minute you saw it, you know, the change doesn't just happen immediately. When you do come to the stage of changing things, you, then this is the order that you change things, right? Based on your authority. But as soon as you saw the evil, the first things that happen to you as a human being and a Muslim upright person is you first feel it in your heart and then uh, you say a good word. Uh, think about it. For example, I gave you a very good example of your own child. If your own child is doing something wrong, the first thing is in your heart, you say, I don't want my child to do this. Even if the child, for example, may Allah protect us, is on drugs. The minute you found out, it will make you upset. What does that mean? In your heart, you already feel this is wrong, right? Then you say, my son, what's going on? You, will you leave this? If he leaves it, alhamdulillah, if he doesn't, you might want to physically take those drugs away because you have the authority and you might want to destroy them. Or you might, but don't deal with it in a way that makes matters worse. This is extremely important and uh, this is something that I thought would be very beneficial for us because many people don't explain that uh, to say, look, there, this order, when it comes to the changing, is the valid order, it's the prophetic order. We must follow the order based on how much authority we have, etc., etc. But when it comes to the feeling, it's the other way around. So as soon as you saw it, it hits this way and then you want to change it, it hits that way. I hope we follow this. Uh, it's very, very interesting. My brothers and sisters, backbiting is prohibited. Obviously, gossip and slander is prohibited. Now, if someone backbites about you and someone slanders you, someone actually uh, fabricates something about you and spreads falsehood about you, you need to know that that happened to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who was the most loved unto Allah. So if Allah has chosen you to go through a little bit of the pain that he went through, then you need to know that it is a sign of acceptance for as long as you leave it in the hands of Allah. They won't be able to harm you. They really won't be able to do anything negative to you. Now, it is hurtful, it is painful, we are just human beings, but the reward of it is such that that person who has spread these tales will actually have to give you a lot of their good deeds. And if they don't have good deeds, then they will be taking your sins onto their shoulders. So it's not worth backbiting about others and it's not worth gossiping, slandering others. Remember, if it happens to us, I've spoken to you. There is hope. There is hope that Allah will give us in return a lot of goodness. You know, people can burn regarding what Allah has given you. Allah will give you even more. If only you are steadfast and you continue being humble and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People will say all sorts. People, it's their test. Ask yourself, do I say all sorts about other people? Am I a gossiper? Am I the source of somebody else's hurt? Am I the source of somebody else's sleepless night? Am I the source of somebody else's grief? If that's the case, you'll never be assisted in your own grief. Do you want help in your grief? Reach out to other people in similar grief, create a group. That's why when I heard about this group and I said, you know what? I will definitely come. What's the reason? The reason is I heard that the messenger peace be upon him told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am with those who are broken hearted. So if you were to go to those who are broken hearted, you will find Allah. That's the reason why I'm here. We're looking for Allah. 
the help of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. That's what it is. Obviously, you know what I mean when I say we're looking for Allah. We're looking for his pleasure. Broken hearted. There are people amongst us who don't know where the next meal is going to come from. They don't know where the next rental is going to come from because they've lost loved ones who kept them and protected them in a way that they didn't have to worry about it. Today, suddenly all the worry is on their shoulders. And then you have a problem. What's the problem? Well, people do not give. People do not give the inheritance in the, pro in the proper manner to some of the widows and sisters. And this is why I want to address the brothers who are going to view this later on or who are going to hear this later on. My beloved brothers, if you are deceiving someone of their wealth and their inheritance or you're delaying them or you're cheating them, Allah has warned you in the Quran of a severe punishment to come in this world and the next. Make sure you take care of the widows and the orphans. The hadith says, the one who takes care of the widows and orphans for the sake of Allah is equivalent as the one who fasts all day every day and who stands in prayer all night every night. La ilaha illallah. I haven't heard of a greater reward than that in terms of service to other people. So widows and orphans come first. And Allah has revealed a whole surah, surah to Nisa, dedicated to widows and orphans and the women. That's why he says right at the beginning, don't eat their wealth. Be careful. Don't cheat them. Look after them. Take care of them. Subhanallah. I always look at those who don't have children and I say, thank Allah. And they say, what do you mean? <coughs> so I say, while we're making dua that Allah bless you with children, perhaps he has not given you the children in order to save you from what other parents are going through. It's easy to have a little child. Initially, the struggling is only with perhaps a few things. As they grow older, certain things happen. It becomes very tricky. It becomes very difficult. You're living in fear. What's going to happen to my child? I hope they don't fall into the bad company or into drugs or into an addiction or the gangster life, etc. So it's important for us to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he blessed us with children, we need to be hands on. Those who don't have children, for example, I was saying, I tell them firstly, thank Allah, because we have to thank Allah, whatever Allah has bestowed upon us. And secondly, understand that those who do have children sometimes are totally depressed because of what has happened and transpired in their relationship with their own children. May Allah safeguard us and our offspring.